good morning, friends. Cheers to coffee. Let's go have some coffee in the garden. Now I, welcome to Kitchen Timer Chronicles. I'm Jules. I have not had coffee in my garden since last season. Oh, good morning, little flowers and sprouts. It's exciting, everybody's waking up and blooming. Got some birds outside. I think there's a lot of dew. Oh, it is very dewy out here. I may not be sitting in this chair. Hmm. Well, shoot, I don't have my cushion out here. Hmm. Well, poo. <laughs> it's very moist out here, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful morning. Let's let you have a seat. I love the early morning in the garden. When I was a smoker, I'd go outside and just listen to the birds and watch them all. And because that's what I would do first thing in the morning. I'd get my coffee and a cigarette and go outside. And it was just lovely today. The birds in the bird feeder, they need to be fed. But I'm out of seed, so I need to make a trip to the store later. trellis of, um, of jasmine is looking lovely on one side anyway. <laughs> so my favorite gardener says that you should have a chair in your garden for your place to have coffee in the morning. And I definitely agree. I think it's a wise purchase and it's something good to have for yourself in the garden. This year I bought this little plastic Adirondack chair for $21 at Lowe's, maybe $22, I think, with tax. But, um, sorry, there's hair hanging off my, there you go. Um, so that was like my first like spring garden purchase was that chair and I've yet to be able to use it. And then I found this cute little table at, I think it was Family Dollar, I stopped in there for something quick, like I don't ever, hardly ever go there, but um, I found this cute little table for five bucks. So I have the table and that, and then I've got my chalkboard that I made last year. So my garden is coming together, I think, finally. And I was out here last night, kind of digging up some weeds. I'm trying to do no dig, but it's really hard when you've got all that weed um, that needs to come up. So. That's gonna be a process. We're supposed to get rain today, which is why I'm out here right now. Um, just sort of looking at everything. And trying to have coffee. My, my strawberries are loaded with um, blossoms, so that's exciting. I might actually get some strawberries this year. Most of the strawberries we had last year, the critters got. And last year I planted, um, you can see the gutters behind me, gutter strawberries, and they, they look, I mean, I've got two, one tray that looks really good that I actually got from Lowe's on clearance because the plants were dying. So I've brought those back to life. The plants that I bought, most of them died. I have three, maybe four of them. I think that they got too dry, like the soil is just not deep enough to keep, to hold moisture. So that was my learning lesson. I didn't, um, they didn't get enough moisture and enough water. So that's... That's on me. This jasmine plant's beautiful. All the blossoms, the yellow blossoms. It's trellising beautifully. Blossoms and I've got some down at the bottom. The other one is supposed to trellis. It's dying, I think. So that's unfortunate. I actually wanted to come out and tell y'all, talk to you all about my channel. Because I will be renaming my channel to a garden name because that's mainly what I do now is gardening. And I think that I really want to focus on gardening in the city or gardening, well, I'm not in the city. I'm in a HOA suburb on the outskirts of the city. Um, so I think that will be my, or my, um, thing that I do is gardening in an HOA, like my whole yard. 
I've built in an HOA suburb. Now it's obviously gonna change depending on your HOA, but there's that. And I also wanna focus a little bit on cheaper methods of gardening because gardening can be very expensive very quickly. So I kinda wanna do some of that and I would like to share that with you. But right now I'm gonna go in and check to see my if my daughter is awake. And, oh, look at my plants. My plants are so cool. Like, oh, love the plants. Anyway, I'm gonna go check to make sure my child isn't freaking out because nobody's in the house uh, when she wakes up. And we will chit chat later because I have lots to share. Okay, several hours later and one nap later. <laughs> I am getting ready to go um, outside and up pot some seedlings because my trays, my seedling trays, 10 of them finally came in and they don't have any holes. I keep, I have ordered these twice now and both times holes came. Apparently I don't read. Um, so I've got some coffee grounds from yesterday because I've got some tomatoes that I want to up pot. I want to give them just a little bit longer before I put them in the garden. A, because I'm not ready for them in the garden yet because garden beds are full of weeds. And B, um, I just want to give them a little bit, because they are so small, I think they need a little bit more time. And I also have some eggshells that I'm going to put in my magic bullet and zip through. So hold tight, it gets loud. Let's shake that up. They need to be powder. people that have done this with the blender. I've never had any problem with like my food processor and usually I bake them to dry them and then it occurred to me, I know a lot of farmers and that's not much from what I actually had. I have probably about a dozen shells. So it just, it is what it is. I swear by a little tiny dusting of shells and a bit of um, coffee grounds under my tomatoes and they do great. So I'm gonna, up pot and go from there. So let's go outside and go up potting. There is never a dull moment around here. I noticed our yard over here is like saturated in a big puddle and we haven't had rain for a few days. And I realized I forgot to turn the water off at the hose last night. So it's been dripping all night. So that not only kills our water bill, but it doesn't do good for the mud situation in our backyard. We have a storm coming. I'm hoping that it won't show up until it's due somewhere around nine o'clock. So let's see how far we get. So anyway, so I have these trays. There are, supposedly there are 10 by 20. I think that's a little off, but maybe not. Maybe, no, that's 10 by 20. Okay, I can't, it's fine. Um, and then, so I try to do things a little cheaper than some, like I just don't have the resources to be able to do a lot of like, I can't make the investment yet, I guess. It's not the fact that you're spending a ton of money, it's an investment, your garden is an investment. And, um, sorry, I've got water all up in my face. Um, these little plants, these seeds, everything is an investment. So when you plant these things and then you have to, replant or move like these I'm actually these are Kajari melon they don't like to be messed with apparently like their root system which I did not know when I started them but they look like great plants right so I'm gonna try and cut them just down and then stick them in the ground directly so that's not one that I will be replanting but I have tomatoes and I have a ton of tomatoes I've got like 20 20 uh, different varieties of tomatoes and I actually accidentally just dumped half my bucket of plants over trying to get the soil but these stems look fantastic like 
They are nice and thick. I do think that they are now starting to get a little leggy because they need more, um, I mean, not more light, but I think they just need more space, like each of them. But I mean, I planted a good amount in there, hoping that they will all take off. And sure enough, so these are the Abe Lincoln tomatoes. They promise big, giant tomatoes. So I'm super excited about it. And in, let's see. Oh, I forgot my gardening pen and I need that. I'll be right back. All right, so my basket of stuff. Cayenne pepper is actually a great um, ground cayenne pepper, very spicy. Animals don't like it. So if you have a problem with squirrels, I hope you guys can hear me. I've got a lot of traffic going on out there right now. Um, if you have a problem with squirrels, try sprinkling after you water, heavily douse your whatever it is, your plants, that you're having trouble with with your squirrels and they should leave them alone should is the operative word i actually haven't had knock on wood any issues with them here because these plants are doused with some um peppered because of my cat because she likes to eat all the leaves my daughter was having an issue we planted a cute little flower bed in front of her little playhouse that she picked out all the little flowers for and we planted seeds and bulbs and all kinds of stuff in there and they were just starting to pop up in their little you know array of flowers and something came along and dug it's a mouse there's a mouse living in her garden so I've heavily doused them so I don't know um, I'm hoping that mouse just decides to go away so Get yourself your dollar store cups, I'm doing like a stack and a half probably, and a decent sized drill bit. I honestly don't know how big this one is. And you stack them up. Boop. And when I up pot, I like to have two holes just because the drainage is better. And it's literally that simple. Um, well, I don't know. I didn't make it actually all the way to the bottom. Layer. I love how the British say layers. It's layer. Mary Berry. I've been watching a lot of. Oh, see, I got like half that stack. So do a stack at a time. I think they come in a stack of like 18 or so, 15. And then I got a big bag of tags because I am going to um, sell some of these, like what I don't use. So I can line this. Come on, little cup. There we go. So I can put like three across ish, give or take. And this actually looks pretty good. I've got probably 10 in that. I'm just getting my cups out and see where they sit. And let's get to work. All right. So if y'all don't have one of these, you really should get one. It's like the greatest little weeder. I got it at um, Baker Creek. It's a cobra head. They run about 25 bucks, but they are built to last. They're really great. Um, I can get those really awful dandelions. that are like, have the roots all the way to China. All right, come here, my soil, my beautiful, beautiful, com actually it's not soil, it's compost. It's mushroom compost that I'm using. And I actually kind of prefer it. It's it's a nice, um, there you go. Um, it's a nice mix, actually. It's um, just natural. I got it at Lowe's for like $3.98 a bag. And it seems to be a good, um, it's a good, compost actually and the, what, the thing with mushroom compost is you don't have to worry about the seeds that you know a mushroom that didn't digest coming back up in your plants like a cow like cow manure or chicken manure and if you don't mind that then more power to you um, because I'm in raised beds and I don't have a ton of space that bothers me a little bit so anyway I take my empty cup I put a good amount of soil in it, not to the top, but if you wanna to go to the top, you certainly can. This does have some bark stuff in it, which bugs me, but it doesn't have as much 
bark stuff in it as some of the other compost that I've tried. Like I tried some potting mix from, I think it's, I think it's called Stay Green. It's S-T-A dash green. Mainly because that's what I could afford and because I didn't want to do miracle Grow on my beds. Like, I just, I don't want the extra chemicals. I tr I'm trying to do as organic as possible. Um, so I just didn't want to go there. But, um, the Stay Green stuff does have quite a bit of just funky stuff in their mix. Like so much, like just wood chips and bits and things. Again, if that doesn't bother you, then do what you, do what you want. But for me, that bothers me a little bit just because I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's compost, right? Like that's the whole purpose of compost. I hear it. I hear that it's dumb, like it's a dumb thing to worry about, but it's just, I don't know, I can't wrap my brain around that, I guess. Uh, whatever, anyway, we're repotting tomatoes. It's all good. So, a cup of tomatoes, and I'm going to take them out of this little cup. Now you can totally save this cup for next year. Loud traffic, because I, I do live on the edge of a city or a town. I don't know if you'd really call Burlington a town, a city, but whatever. Anyway, so I've got these little guys and you just, I'm gonna pull out some, I'm actually gonna put this over my, over my bed bucket. And you just carefully nudge them apart like that. Put these guys down until you get one tomato plant all by itself and then Oh yeah, and don't forget my coffee grounds. You see, coffee going in the hole directly under its roots. Oh, and I forgot, forgetting my um, maybe I should get the spoon for that. And just put just a little bit. I'll show you this. Hang on. See, whoops, it's down in that hole. And then you poke the hole again if you if it covers up and then you take your little your little guy and you stick them in there and then because tomatoes want to grow so much like tomatoes are amazing little plants i think you can actually put the dirt right up to those first little baby leaves so he's planted deeper see and that's one so we go on to the next one. Um, but plants, like if you leave a tomato out in the wild, in the wild, um, they will not um, grasp onto anything. Like they're not gonna climb up a, a branch or a tree. Like they just don't, they're not natural climbers. So in order to get them to climb, we have to train them, right? And in order to do that, we have to tie them up. But in the process of that, they, um, if they are left out to their own devices, they will crawl around the ground and um, put off little roots all along their stem and kind of glue themselves to the, to the ground. See, number two, whoops. Wait a minute, guys. Okay. What was this, Abe Lincoln? Hey, Lincoln. It's good to know which tomatoes I'm planting, huh? Let me move this just a smidge so hard. All right. I don't have like the best, the best setup, but I mean, no, that's not, that's not good. Ugh. Ugh. Sorry, technical issues. It's fine. It's all fine. So we do it with another one. Do this. Put a little bit of coffee in the bottom. And snake shells. Now, I actually know people who put a whole egg underneath each tomato plant when they grow or when they plant them in the ground. Um, I've never done that. I hear that it can be pretty cool, pretty beneficial, the nutrients in that egg, because they are really heavy feeders, which is why I put coffee down around their roots and I put um, and I put eggshell like I'll 
when I plant these in ground, I will put more eggshell down in the bottom. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to pat them down in their, you know, super firm, but you do want them to be snug, I guess. So kind of just boop, boop. This one looks like he, knew, he could use a little bit more soil, actually. I don't know how many plants I'm gonna be able to do this with because this is my last bag of topsoil that I bought. My husband said to me, he said, well, why don't, because he said, how many bags of soil do you need? I'm like, 25, which I overestimated. I think I need, no, that'd be right, 25. So I need another 20. He said, how about we buy five at a time? I'm like, okay. And he's like, well, you're not on your feet. So it's not like you're going to use these right away. And I'm like, Psh, have you met me? I mean, really? So it's fine. It's whatever. So, just have to educate, you know? You've got to educate the masses. This guy is really tall, so I'm going to definitely be careful and put some soil around him. Now, a lot of people don't do it like this. This is just the way I do it. You know, do what works for you, but do make sure when you plant your tomatoes in the ground that they're planted deep, like up to the first leaves, um, because that will help them become a stronger tomato plant in the long and in the long run that's really what you want so now I'm just putting I'm not even putting all that oops, in the hole that I can't seem to keep open this stuff is pretty moist moist damp okay well I did put that much in there at any rate um you don't have to put a ton I am putting a little bit more I guess than I thought but um, let me just pull gently gently pull them away because their seeds or their root systems are so little they're easy to get apart right now and though I am a little bummed that they're not bigger it's because they're in these pots so and I am gonna sell some of these um, at like a little seed sale sorry I've got water dripping or hose makes me nuts. It doesn't um, fully turn off. And then the little handle falls off. So, it's deeper. Now, I have some of these with no leaves because my cat ate them. Um, and those obviously are not going to be little tomato plants. But, they can go in this mess of compost in with the dirt and stuff that I um, I'm knocking out of these cups or trays or what have you, and that's fine. All right, do we put stuff in that one? Ew. So what do y'all do during the day? I'm just kidding. Um, for my channel, I really do feel the need to kind of treat everybody like they're a friend in my garden, and I'm explaining you guys, explaining you guys, explaining how to do some things. To, so I'm explaining to you guys how to up pot some tomatoes or how to, you know, plant a raised bed with a trellis or whatever. And I'm trying to share my tips and tricks for cheaper gardening because I know gardening can get so expensive. We, the first year we spent building the beds and filling the beds and the plants to put in the beds we probably spent three grand. And I feel that's pretty, that's pretty close to what we spent, maybe give or take. But yeah, it was, cause it adds up so quick. You know, you go in and you're like, oh, look at these plants, babe. Like I gotta get this plant and I gotta, get, gotta do this. And you know, what about this? And you know, before you know it, you're up at the checkout and they say, you know, $1,900, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh my God, how did that happen? Um, and it happens quick and it happens to the best of us. So this year, um, my husband <clears throat> had to take a pay cut and all of his overtime is gone. So he is now salaried. So we are a little tighter on our purse strings now than we were before. Um, so I'm really trying to do things differently. 
and better, maybe not better, but just cheaper for our family because we just don't have that kind of income anymore, um, any kind of disposable income. And it hurts, so we are just trying to make the best of it. And for me, I feel like, you know what, that's a good lesson for, I think, anybody because gardening doesn't have to be expensive. You know, you should absolutely, you know, spend your money on good soil because that is a big deal. And, um, and you will pay for that later if you don't. If you don't get good soil, you won't have healthy plants. Like, it's really not rocket science. But, um, so, you know, but there's lots of people like me out there who just don't have that kind of disposable, especially now with, you know, COVID and stuff. Good grief, do y'all know that I'm doing a video? Like, be quiet, get loud. Um, so we just have to find different ways, right? So maybe you and a friend both want to garden and both want to do heirlooms. And heirloom seeds are a little expensive. They're a little pricier than others. Ooh. Sorry, little plant. Just kind of ripped him off, didn't mean to. I thought he was apart. Um, so heirloom seeds are a little bit pricier, but they are really good seeds. And it's really fun to grow something not only beautiful and delicious, but different than what the grocery stores have, right? Like, because as we've all found out that, you know, the grocery stores are cheaper than gardening, but it may not be the best stuff that they could put on our tables, because it's not, you know, it's GMO and it's whatever. So, um, so maybe you and a friend or a few friends wanna go in together and get some seeds and share them. That is an excellent way to get seeds, an excellent way to kind of share that price tag a little bit. Like I've spent some money on seeds this year, but I will have those seeds for a while and now I have the seeds to make more seeds. So I'm okay with that. And for the most part, you know, I think that that's fine. Um, I have to be very careful. So I didn't buy anything that I wasn't I didn't buy anything extra. So like I have a lot of tomato seeds. I didn't buy a whole lot of extra seeds. I think I bought two more that I couldn't find. And, um, and then I bought the rest of the veggies. I did buy some herbs and some flowers because while flowers, you know, may not bring in food, it makes me want to be out there. So, because it's pretty and who doesn't love a pretty garden? So, and I'm trying to build a, all that to say, and I'm trying to build a um, cottage garden over by my shed, and that's this year's project. But I'm also trying to be. This one may not make it, but I I'm gonna I'm gonna try it anyway. Um, he can get in it. He's got long long roots, so we'll see how he does. He's just a little peonier than the rest. All right, buddy. There you go. All right. Um, at any rate, so my cottage garden. Um, it may just, may be a little bit different. Go away, bug. Oh. All right, so these are Beauty King, and there's one little stem in there. Not anymore. So that one got decimated. These are habanada peppers. I'm gonna leave these guys alone. I'm gonna try and just replant tomatoes today just because I think the tomatoes, these are candy land, red currant. I only have three of those. So I could pop those in. Now there's no real benefit to the color of the cups. It's just what I had, what I could find. All right. This water behind me is making me crazy. But look how pretty. Baby tomatoes. Yeah, I'm gonna bring you around to go plant my Kajari melons. I'm so excited about Kajari melons. If you don't know what they are, Google it. Um, Baker Creek, I think, is the only company that sells Kajari melon seeds. Um, why are you over there? I don't know. Oh, maybe I was just trying. Oh, I was. Good lord. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> I uh, my wits about me today. 
I got my clean tray and these trays I bought 10 of them and they were 25 bucks for the 10 so that equals out to 250 a tray they're 10 by 20 and you really can't find anything better than that in stores like even my clean brand new cat uh, my cat litter pans they're not as long and they're not as flat the sides go in like this so these are nice and square so I can actually fill this little tray and at 250 that's kind of a really good bargain. I mean, that is, not kind of, that is a really good bargain. So, okay. And now I'm gonna get a, a marker for each one of these before I plant the others, because otherwise I will get my dirt. Do you ever notice in the spring that you're just always covered in dirt, soil? And in the spring, at the end of the day, you should smell like dirt. I forget, I can't, like that's one of my favorite quotes, and I can't remember who said it. What are these again? Abe Lincoln's, good grief. And I got this little marker, it's a garden marker. It's supposed to not come off your, um, your, your thingies. Lincoln. My, this is a fat, this is a fat little marker for these teeny little thingies. I need to, I kind of am a big writer, <laughs> so it's hard to write small. There we go, that's a little bit better. And it's still kind of legible, right? Is that how you spell Lincoln? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Um, so I've been really giving it some good thought about what I want to do with my channel. And I do this because I was looking back on the, all my videos from the first time I started my channel, which was Kitchen Timer Chronicles. I called it that because I was using a kitchen timer to keep track and I was only doing 10 minutes because somebody told me, oh, you are babbling on and nobody cares, blah, blah, blah. And I was doing weight loss at the time. It was like a 30 day challenge that all the stars were doing. So I wanted to do that too, just to see if I could. And um, I did not. <laughs> and so I gave up, but I have the channel. So it's like, well crap, now what? And so then I started just doing like musings or um, some art stuff, which isn't bad, but, and I am an artist and I love to do art, but, the gardening thing has really kind of become a secondary passion and it's been like this fiery passion within my heart so I'm wanting to actually um, rename my channel I think when the garden gets all planted I think I will rename it and it I think I should be able to do that right I hope um, Sorry, it's hard to talk and write Abe Lincoln at the same time. So um, that's my goal. And then again, like trying to do kind of cheaper gardening tips and do, you know, um, garden tours in my HOA raised bed garden that is constantly a work in progress because my fence is not built. I started doing the fence last year and I got sidetracked. And I felt like, you know, 100 degrees outside every day. And it's like, oh, I'll wait till the fall. And then the fall came finally. And it was so late that it was like, it was freaking November. And I was like, I'm not doing that right now. It's cold. Cause it went from, you know, being still really warm to, um, to cold. So anyway, <laughs> that just didn't work out. So hence why like my, um, my bulbs didn't get planted either, and I found a whole bag of them. I thought I'd planted them, and I kept looking in the garden earlier. It was like like a few weeks ago. I was like, where was everything that I planted? And then I found it in my studio in a bag. And so somebody had said, hey, I think you can just put those in your freezer for like a week or two or however long you need, and then pop them in the ground directly. And then that'll trick the bulb into thinking that that's their winter, and now it's spring and time to pop up. And sure enough, I've got bulbs popping up. I don't know what they are all yet, what they all are yet, but 
I've got more bulbs than I know that were in there earlier, so that's a good, um, that's a good sign. So these little babies, I got one leaf that got eaten and I got three that came up. The rest of them did not. So I feel like maybe I had a couple more. I don't know, at any rate. That's what I've got to plant. So I'll put these guys right there and get this guy out. And I'm actually just putting the soil that was in those cups back in, oh, whoops, um, back in my mix. So, cause it's, you know, it's still good soil. And that's fine and good, whoops. Go back to my eggshell mixture and my little seedling. There you go, baby. Oh, look at you and your little leaves. You're so precious. Oh my gosh. Anybody else talk to their tomato plants when they up pop them? Just me? That's okay. I turned, I think my husband, I'm, I think I've, or my fiance. He, so I call him my husband because we've been together nine years this June. We've been engaged for eight of those nine, or no, seven of those nine years. Or haven't gotten married yet because of insurance, of health insurance, because America. And um, so, but I tend to call him my husband a lot. I wish that I could stop doing that, but it just rolls right off my tongue. It's like we're meant to be. At any rate, my fiance has started talking to the tree outside that we planted last year, and I could not be more happy about that. Like, it's adorable. Ta da! Um, and these are Candyland. They're like a red currant style tomato. They're supposed to be really tiny and I'm really hopeful that I have them or that that's what these are because I found this brand of tomatoes in the grocery store and they're called tiny tomatoes or something. That's what they call them. But so that's obviously not the variety and I'm not about to save seeds from a, from a grocery store tomato, inferior tomato. But I do like them on my salads because they're small. At any rate, we were coming up from the neighbor's house yesterday and he, he noticed the leaves on our tree. We planted this beautiful, um, I think it's a sugar maple. It's some sort of, I can't remember maybe if that's a variety or not. I have to check my records, but it is this beautiful maple. It looks like it's on fire in the fall, like bright orange and red. It's just gorgeous. And um, so we, oh, hey guys. Um, Oh, huh, right in my mouth and not watching what I'm doing. Um, and so we had to buy a new tree because there was nothing in our yard. We really wanted a tree because everybody else in our neighborhood had a tree but us. And so, um, so we bought this little tree and planted it and it's got leaves and new growth and it looks absolutely beautiful. And he was so excited. He's like, our tree has leaves, babe, look. And he went over to it and he's like, look at you and your leaves. And I was like, turned him into a crazy plant man. I love it. So I'm pretty proud of that. The crazy plant man and his crazy plant lady. It's all good. I think we're going to go over real quick after I get these, after I get this last tomato in and I, actually I can mark them later. I know what they are. It's fine. They're the candy land. Cause the candy land can. Candy man. All right, there you go guys. You're a beautiful set of tomatoes. Actually, no, I'm gonna do this now before I forget. Candy land. Candy land. Good grief, this pen needs to be smaller. Candy land. I don't even know what that says, but something. Candy land, candy land, candy. Candy land. My my Y looks like a four. It's like whatever. All right, let's take these Kajari melons. Let's take my little Kajari melons and go plant them in the garden. So my daughter and I were out here actually earlier and amended the soil in this bed. So and I'm trying. Whew, I'm trying hard to do the no dig method this year. So I guess we'll see. Let's try and go down further of what I'm doing. So I have this 
trellis right here. This trellis, so I'm gonna actually plant them right along here and just pop one in one hole, one in another hole, and then one probably right there. And I know this is probably more, and then I'm gonna place my little rock, probably more than I need to have Kajari melon wise, but oh boy. So remember I said that they don't like their roots messed with? I guess we're gonna find out how much, how much they don't like their roots messed with. See if I can just nudge them apart carefully. I don't wanna upset them, but obviously I need to get them apart carefully. Can you guys see? Sorry, oh, whoops, hang on. Sorry, I have technical issues. Okay, so just kind of being really careful because they are really wound together. I didn't expect that to be for this small of a little plant, but oh, little guys, come on. There we go. Carefully, carefully, carefully. I'm going to water the crap out of them. Okay, we got one, yay. And if we can get the other one. Okay, come on guys. I know, I know, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Ooh, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, oops, sorry. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Oh, got little, little rootly sprouts. All right, there's your roots back. Sorry. I know that's not how it works, but Here. Now this is probably more Kajari melon than I need. And my little rock that I painted last year. Got my Kajari melons. Hold on, put that right there. All right. All right. We got some Kajaris. All right. So I'm moving right along. These little tomatoes, I will be. Um, Obviously, bottom watering since I have these bottom water trays without holes. Oh, whoops. And uh, some of them might get a little puny looking. Um, for a day or so, you know, and then they should pop right back up. They should be totally fine. Tomatoes do that. They're actually a hardier seedling and vegetable than I think we give them credit for because we think oh they give us beautiful fruit they're delicate and we and not really tomatoes are actually probably one of the stronger vegetables like they can grow I mean 12 feet tall if you give them like the indeterminate ones anyway uh, will grow you know 12 flipping feet tall or taller if you give them space if you give them something to cling on to remember you've got to tie your tomatoes with something I like the uh, garden tie, um, it's kind of like a, it's almost like a plastic, but I think it's a biodegradable substance, but it's like tape and you unroll it and you know, that way it doesn't eat into your tomato plants or into the um, stems of anything, because you don't want that. So don't ever use like zip ties. Use pantyhose cut up into strings or t-shirt strings or what have you, like that's, a cheap and cheerful way to recycle old t-shirts and it's not going to damage your plants so these guys these little paul robesons with the exception of this one he's a little puny but i think with you know the added nutrients and his own cup i think he'll do just fine i have one more of the paul robesons robesons um I think the tomato I'm most excited about this year growing, these are all brand new varieties to me, by the way, like I've never grown any of them before. I usually get German Johnson's and Purple Cherokee, and Purple Cherokee are one of my very favorite tomatoes to this point, but I've only grown maybe four varieties, and that includes a cherry tomato that I bought off the cuff at um, Lowe's last year for the critters that come into my garden because I figured, well, if they're gonna eat stuff in somebody's garden, maybe they should have their own garden. This is my thinking. And uh, so I planted them. They wouldn't touch them. I planted them some cucumbers that I just bought, you know, at the store or whatever. I didn't do seeds last year, so most everything I bought were already, you know, plants. So they were already plants, so I just had to 
transplant them. But, so anyway, this year I'm super excited because I have 20 different varieties, new varieties of tomatoes. The Paul Robinson, is that how you say it, Paul? Robison, and the Dr. Wichi or Witchy. I like the Witchy, like, remember? Um, Alvin and the Chipmunks, and he sang Dr. Witchy, ooh ha ha, was it Dr. Witchy? Anyway. Oh crap, I don't think I put anything in this cup. Maybe, maybe I did, I don't remember. Anyway, I guess we'll find out how well that one does. But um, anyway, these tomatoes will kind of maybe look a little puny for a day or two, but they should pop right back up um, and do just fine. And then once they get a little bit bigger, like maybe about a four inch plant, I will move them into the garden with their friends and plant them. Now, I'm, I don't obviously don't have room for all of these, which is why I'm gonna sell some. I'm actually gonna give um, a, a good bit away um, to my in-laws, though they don't, I don't think they want a whole lot of plants, but they'll have maybe a couple of each, of, of maybe just a handful. Um, Cause my father-in-law is all about a beefsteak tomato, but it's like, dude, you don't even know. Like, you don't know. <laughs> these are so much better than a beefsteak. Not that there's anything wrong with the beef steak. It's just when you get into hybrid tomatoes, I mean, not hybrid, but when you get into um, the heirloom varieties, you really, it's, it's just something else. Like the flavor on those and they're just, they're so different and so just, I, I can't explain it. Like it's not something that you can really put into words if you haven't experienced it. So I highly recommend it to everyone get yourself some seeds and just try something like try something new every year just buy some seed online on Baker Creek or um, they're great for heirlooms they let's see who do I get I get a lot of emails from people Johnny seeds is a good one um, oh Wild Boar Farms is another really good one. They primarily do heirloom variety tomatoes. I've got a few of their varieties in here somewhere. Um, and their names are actually really funny because they have hybrids that are stabilized. So some of these, I have a few hybrid. Let's see, Paul Robeson. There we go. Paul Robeson. I should really just write this on the cup. Um, Paul. Robeson. Um, let's see. Oh, one other thing. When we were talking about good soil and how to grow plants. Yeah, those are starting to get a little weepy. I need to water them. Um, how to grow plants and start seeds. I know a lot of people and a lot of people swear by these those little jiffy pop things, you know, the little seed, they're like little discs and then you add water to them and they puff up into like this little, this little soft pod looking thing, right? And it's got netting around it. So that number one equals more work because you can't just take that little plant and stick it directly in the ground. You have to cut that netting off. And that's a pain in the butt. Um, and I have not had good luck with those. I've, ne I've been able to grow a few little things here and there, but nothing that got big enough to even put out in the garden. So it was just a huge waste of time and money and effort. Um, so I don't recommend those. Like dollar store cups, a dollar store, you know, uh, metal tray, like those baking trays, get a couple of them so they're a little bit stout. Um, I tried that actually with one of these, I had a whole tray of tomatoes in one of those and the weight of, because I didn't double them or even triple them, like I probably should have, but I had a lot of cups in there and it was all like newly planted, like just planted seeds, no dirt, no plants or anything that I knew what was what. Everything was labeled, but if that dirt had fallen out that way, I would have gotten all these seeds all kinds of mixed up and it would have been a, a huge, just a wait and see game of, hey, let's see what actually comes up and gets planted and survives. But um, I dropped the tray like right at, like it started to cave, it started to buckle. So if you do the dollar store trays, get a few of them so that way they're um, stout. Um, and cups and some, a decent bag of soil will run you about five bucks. So for under $10, 
plus, you know, four bucks for seeds. So under $15, you can plant some seeds. I mean, you can plant all the one packet of seeds, I'm saying, but if you go in with it with a few friends, two seeds, to go get seeds, you can split the seeds among, you know, three or four people and everybody gets some and everybody gets a fun variety. So that's always an option. Find some gardening people. There's plenty of us out there. It's a little scary how many people are out there that we garden. But I want to thank you all uh, for hanging out with me and listening to my ramblings about seeds and planting and sharing what I know. I will also tell you this. Spring in 79A, in zone 7, I'm sorry, 9A. <laughs> Spring in 7B in the south, it's hot already, right? Like it's 80 some degrees, well, it's like 70 degrees right now, but it's getting hotter. Don't be planting your brassicas and your carrots and your um, frost tender plants right now and expecting a good delicious harvest because you're not gonna get it. Um, brassicas and carrots and radishes for that purpose for that matter uh, they all get very bitter in the heat so if you can get a few picked before you know it gets hot good luck but I mean that's just not something I waste time doing in the summer I did it my first year and I learned my lesson I hated the radishes that I grew they were disgusting and I was like why are they so bitter and that's why they don't like the heat I left those carrots in the ground over winter and actually we pulled some up because they were still perfectly good and they they were sweet and delicious and perfect. They weren't woody, they weren't mealy, they weren't bitter, like, yeah. I still got a lot of carrots in there, I'm hoping, and they've overwintered. Like I planted them for the fall garden and I don't know what happened to fall but we're now in the spring and they're still not ready. So all that to say, don't be planting those kind of flower or those kind of vegetables in the spring if you live in the hot, hot weather, because you're not gonna like the results. Save those seeds for your fall, um, your fall crops, and I'll, and that will have a reason. You know, that'll give you a reason to have a fall garden, um, to have carrots and veggies. So all that to say, friends, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. It was a pleasure as always. Um, and hopefully I will be bringing more good content and good things to share. So until next time, friends, happy gardening.